in this video, we will use the transfer function of the DC motor, which was derived in a previous video, and is given by this expression for h of s, to uh, determine the output of the motor in response to an input of a unit step function. So basically, we're going to start off with something like this. We'll have the input signal be 10 volts times U of T. So this is a signal that's zero, or a voltage that's zero until time zero, and then it goes up to 10 volts. We'll also assume zero initial conditions, uh, because so, so that's assuming that the motor's at rest and that there's no current flowing through it when we start. And our goal is to find out what the output of the motor is going to be in response to this input. And so we're going to use the Laplace transform in the Laplace transform domain, V of s, whoops, in the Laplace transform domain, that's not what we want to write. Let's try this one more time. Omega of s, that's the output, uh, it's the rotational velocity of the motor, is h of s times v of s. Okay, so the idea is that to find the output of the motor, uh, we're going to get it in terms of the Laplace transform. We need the Laplace transform of the input. We already have h of s, it's up here, and uh, we've got all the handy numerical constants that we need to actually evaluate h of s. So the only thing we really need to do is figure out what v of s is. So we take the, law, the Laplace transform of this guy. The Laplace transform of the unit step function is 1 over s, and it's multiplied by a constant of 10, so that gives us 10 over s. So basically now, to get omega of s, we're going to take h and multiply it by v sub s. So we're just going to have uh, this whole thing up here multiplied by 10 over s. Okay, wow, that's a really big s. So anyway, that gives us um, what, well, so this then becomes omega of s. So, all we have to do now to find out what this is in the time domain is take the inverse Laplace transform of this whole big chunk of stuff. Okay. And uh, I'll simplify this just a little bit, I guess, before going to MATLAB to ask it to do the computations. So, uh, Omega of s is going to be 10 over this constant, I L over K T s cubed, because I'm multiplying this s by this guy, plus this constant, s squared plus K B s. Okay. So all we need to do now to uh, uh, know what the uh, time response of the motor is, is take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So we'll uh, bring up MATLAB. Actually, we'll slide this out of the way so we can uh, bring up MATLAB. We'll type in the constants. Okay, now our numerator, A, is just, or I'm sorry, our numerator, B, is just going to be a vector that has a single value 10, because the numerator is just the single number 10. A3, which is the uh, 
coefficient in front of the s cubed term is L times IL times KT. Whoops, got that one wrong. Let's try it again. Divided by KT. There we go, that looks better. A2 is R times IL divided by KT. A1, which again is the coefficient in front of the, uh, the single S term, and A0 is going to be 0 because there is no uh, term in the denominator polynomial that uh, doesn't have an S in it. So now we can compute um, the uh, uh, partial fraction expansion of this using the residue using the residue function. Uh, whoops, I forgot to define my vector of coefficients. It's late in the day and I'm tired. Okay, now let's try this again. And there we have it. Um, our uh, uh, our, uh, our uh, coefficients, uh, the roots, and so on. So, um, okay, so let's go back to our uh, uh, drawing of the uh, motor response, or the uh, Laplace transform, and uh, we'll get rid of some of this so we've got room to keep going. Uh, our partial fraction expansion is going to look like this. There's actually going to be three terms in it, so we'll have an R1 over S minus P1 plus R2 over S minus P2 plus R3 over S minus P3. And we have that um, MATLAB has computed the following values for us. I'll just write them down here. We have a 19.0463 minus 64.5008 and 45.4545. P1 is minus 3.5. 8601, P2 is minus 1.1399, and P3 is 0. So when we write this all out, then, we're going to have the following, and I think I'll pause the video, write it out, and come back rather than make you watch me write all this. Okay, so I've written this all out. And the one thing that I wanted to do here is notice, have you notice that this is, this last term down here is S minus P3, which is 0. So this is just going to be S. Okay. So with these values, I can take the Lapl inverse Laplace transform because they look like they're straight out of a table. So we have that omega of t is given by the coefficient uh, e to the minus um, and the root there, uh, minus the next coefficient e to the minus 1.1399 plus 45.4545 u of t. And to do this properly, there's a u of t 
on each of the exponentials to make sure that it's clear that for values of t less than 0, they're 0. So here we have the uh, time value for this signal. And very quickly, I'll plot it. OK, well, you weren't looking. I had MATLAB plot this time function. And you can see that it starts at a, the motor starts at a speed of 0. And that speed increases fairly rapidly until it gets pretty close to 45.45, which turns out to be the steady state speed of the motor. And so that's what happens when the input uh, to the system, the input voltage, is a step uh, voltage of uh, 10 volts, which goes from 0 to 10 at 0. So that's it. Uh, that's how you compute the output of the system using, or from the input, using Laplace transforms and the transfer function.